Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this holy moment. Lord, I just thank you for the baby dedication, worship, even the giving of our tithes and offering, and Lord, your special presence that is here. You are here, Jesus, and you're here to speak to us, and you're here to bring impartation and challenge, and you're here to heal, to save, and to deliver. And Lord, we just say, have your way, Holy Spirit, here this morning. I humble myself before you, and I ask that you speak through me. Give to your people what they need here today. It's in Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Um, I kind of cut this sermon in half, and we'll finish it, Lord willing, next week, so I'll just be brief this week. But I want to talk to you about something that actually has happened throughout my life as a believer, and I believe it's happened to many of you. I'm convinced of that. I could start calling you up, and, and you could come up, and each could give a testimony where I'm about to talk to. But for some of you, it may not be so. And I want to encourage you here this morning uh, to, to listen for God's voice. So I know we have a PowerPoint back there, and they're pulling that up right now. Um, but I want to talk to you about the still, small voice, that we are to listen to the still. How many have heard that term, the still, small voice? Some of you, okay. My text is in 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19, verse 12, but I'm going to read verses 11 through 13. And there's a little background to this, and we'll touch on it in a moment. It says, then the Lord said, Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord is about to pass by. And a great and mighty wind tore into the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak, and he went out. He stood at the mouth of the cave. Suddenly, the voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And I'm going to start off with a quote here and a statement that God's power is often manifested in small, steady actions and steps of faith. And no action, somebody shout no action, is too small or insignificant in his great plan. Somebody needs to say amen. That's a fact. Every little thing. And see, we look for the demonstrative. We look for the supernatural, but many times it's the insignificant things to you that are very significant to the Lord and how he orchestrates the kingdom of God moving forward <clears throat> and touching people's lives. Uh, I have a picture here. Rhonda mentioned last week the team returned from Sri Lanka, and <clears throat> um, they're, they're doing well. Some still rec recovering from it. I hear it's uh, every hour of time change, it's, uh, uh, what is it? A, a day. So that's 10 and a half days. <laughs> so we're still adjusting. But uh, it's on the other part of the world. Little island off the coast of Sri Lanka, uh, off the India, excuse me. About 22 million, most of uh, Buddhist and uh, Hindu up north. Uh, but I find it surprising how open they are to the gospel. How open they are to people praying over them that they won't turn that down. And so it uh, would be this right here to the left is our driver, and I can't remember their names. They're usually this long. Uh, forgive me. But uh, he was a young man uh, that, so we had five days of intensive ministry and, and, and ministering and to the church and uh, various, just all ministry over five days. And we said, okay, we're gonna, gonna do a little elephant safari. We've done it before. It is kind of fun. It's really like, rough shot. I mean, it's not sanitized, all right? It's, it's, you're out there. You mean, you're driving by cobra dens, wild animals are out there. Come on, somebody. Um, and so this gentleman, he had a 1978 Toyota Land Cruiser that looked like a jalopy. It's falling apart. No seat belts, nothing, you know, little metal bar for a door, stick shift, you know, driving on the wrong side of the road. And he was 21 years old, and he spoke very broken, just Little, little English, and I, so, so while we're, the team's in the back standing up, taking pictures, I'm in the 
driver's seat with him, and just, he's barefoot, okay, so all the pedal rubber is all worn out, and he's barefoot, and there's no power steering, and I said, what's the deal, no power steering, go, man power, he said, man power, and it was, uh, I mean, and these roads are not bulldozed, paved people, these are, you know, this type of a, you know, and he's just, you know, he knows where to go, and, and he's done it, and I thought, who is this guy, and I, oh, and I always, the thought comes to me, Jesus died for this man and cares about this man. And so I was being stirred in my spirit, and as I have before in other situations, and to somehow share Jesus, to do something, and I didn't have the clear full picture, but I just knew I need to try to communicate with this guy. How many hear what I'm saying? And so I pointed out, and I was like, so is this a five-speed or a four-speed? And Disney goes, Dad. It's right there on a panel with the stick. I'm like, thank you, Destiny. <laughs> and, and, and so, he, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, it's five speed. And, you know, he was kind of going through it. I said, okay, reverse here. And, and, uh, and I said, uh, so what do, you, what do you make? What do you get paid? He goes, well, my boss pays me 1,500 rupees a trip. I said, wow, okay. And that calculates to about $4.93 U.S. dollars a day. I said, do you have like five, six of these a day? He goes, no, 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 no. He said, I usually, usually have one, maybe two, never three. And it's not every single day. So I started calculating about $20, $30 a month maybe this kid makes at 21 years old. And, uh, and, he, and I pull out, I said, well, are you married? He goes, yes, I have a wife. And then he, he pulls out a cell phone, 21 years old. He's connected, and he starts pulling up his photos, and he goes, my baby boy, 10 days old, little baby, cute little, little boy. I said, well, what's his name? He said, they don't name it. And I guess tradition is there is that families come together after 45 days, and then whoever puts the most rupees in a pot, they get to name the child. Wouldn't that be good for baby dedications and stuff here in America? Whoever wants to name it, start throwing in cash. Well, anyhow, <laughs> his name is El Dorado, you know. Or uh. <clears throat> Anyhow, he said, but my wife, she a Christian. I said, oh, I said, we're, we're Christians. We're Christians here. We believe in Jesus, that he came, he died. He's driving, turning, you know, and coming to the preserve. And he said, but I, he, I'm Buddhist. He said, I, I'm a Buddhist. I said, okay. And... Uh, I just began to talk to him about little things here and there, and I just thought, you know, I just can't let this guy go after this is done. And as we were returning in, uh, he said, you happy? You happy now? You happy? And I said, we're very thankful, thankful what you did uh, taking us. And uh, I said, but I, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. So I, after we got done, got dropped off at, at the hotel, uh, I pulled him aside and asked Heron, I said, will you interpret please to him? Just say, you know, we're believers. He showed me a picture of your baby. I just felt moved. I want to bless your baby and pray over you and your family. Just something simple. How many hear what I'm saying? Just a simple little, can I just pray with you? And he just kind of stood there and, and prayed with them. And then, and then I just felt to, to bless them with a gift. We had some rupees. And, and it was 10,000 rupees, which is about $32 U.S., okay? Maybe, maybe a month or two months of work. I said, but I want you to, to go. And I said, I feel your wife's been praying. She's a Christian. He goes, yes, she's a Christian. She goes to the Christian church, but when, when you know, he's, you know, not working or whatever, then she'll go to the Buddhist temple to be with him. But, you know, so there's this, this challenge between the family. And, and I said, I just felt she's been praying to the true and living God, her God, and for provision. And so I just want to bless you. So don't go spend this money on alcohol. He's like, no, 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 no. I said, buy it for your little son. Buy him something and do something with your wife. And as we prayed over him, that was it. Well, then we had breakfast the next morning, and we were ready to leave. We were packing up, and Heron goes, Pastor Mike, the owner, the boss, right here on the right, he called, and he said, my employee kid came to me, and he said, you never believe we met the kindest people in the world. He said, they, they were so kind. They prayed over me, and they blessed my child, and they just blessed my family. And, and, and as he was sharing this, the boss said, I have all the money I need, and I, I need prayer. 
This is what the guy said. He goes, I'm so frustrated. I, I, I'm in agony. I'm in pain. I have no peace in my life. This is what this guy's saying. And he said, please, will they pray for me? <laughs> and so I said, oh, Heron, well, thank you for telling me that. Yes, we will pray for him. When's he coming over? He's coming over right now. So we are on, this is how it works, okay? This is the facts. The whole team was there can verify this, and there's actually a video of praying with this man. Uh, but so there, we're on our way out of, you know, the hotel, parked on the side on the driveway. He pulls in, he walks over, and I said, Lord, this has got to be to the point. And just, I mean, this guy's like a ripe cherry. Come on, somebody. And he just, began to talk about his frustration, his pain. I talked about the true and living God. I began to share Christ. Of course, Destiny, now she has her camera here, and she's praying, but she's videoing. <laughs> and so she videoed the whole thing. And I just said, you need Jesus. That's your answer, the true and living God. And I began to say, can we, can we lead you in a prayer of salvation? Can we pray with you? Yes, I want this peace. I want this peace. And so we led that man to Christ in that moment. On a safari, talking to a little kid. Yes, amen, amen. But it was a team effort, please hear me. And it was the church praying here. You, you, you guided us, really. You really did, those who were praying. I mean that. But I'm sharing this with this mini-series about listening to the still, small voice. And so you may be on a safari looking at, you know, <laughs> wild animals. You can still Bring Christ into that situation. Every single one of you. Every single one of you, right where you're at. The problem is the enemy wants to silence our mouth. And to cause that thought to go be dismissed, to say there really isn't really mu nothing much. They really, no, that's crazy. Why would he ask me to say that? Why should I speak that? That's pretty radical right now. He may just shoot that down right in this moment. Those are all lies. Are you listening to me this morning? Every single one of you that is born again has the power of the Holy Spirit within you in that still small voice, as, as, which in the Old Testament here, Elijah had the Spirit of God upon him, not within him, and he heard that voice. And so this man was saved. He was born again in that holy moment. We encouraged him to go plug into a Christian church and talk to his wife, and, and, and I just thought it was just an amazing little encounter, and I've had numerous of those throughout my life. I've had, when I open my mouth, but here's the thing, there's many times I didn't. I didn't. You know, I hear these still small voice phrases, Christians say, something within me urged me to say something. To, you know, I had this weird feeling that I was just supposed to, 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 to do something. I just needed, had to do it. And what are those? Those are usually statements or phrases that I've heard people use trying to describe a feeling that they were supposed to say or do something in the moment, but they didn't. They didn't. I don't mean this is condemnation or judgment at all because I put myself in the same category as I just stated. I have resisted that still small voice, sadly, on a number of occasions for certain reasons. I'll get into it uh, a little bit. But my challenge to us all this morning is to listen for that still, small voice and obey it. And so we see in Elijah's encounter with God on Mount Horeb, mentioned in 1 Kings 19, he is fleeing Jezebel after a major victory that they had with the false prophets were wiped out and God showed up with fire as a very demonstrative Holy Spirit moment. I mean, it was very powerful. And so what is this? And who? I'll get into this still small voice. It is God's spirit within us, the believer. And he's there trying to, watch this, tell us something for our benefit or for the benefit of others. That's that voice. That still small voice is not just a gentle whisper, but a powerful and transformative presence that really can shake us or that person to the core. It really can can change the whole destiny of somebody's life listening to that voice. And sadly, the thing is, sometimes we can ignore that voice. The voice is not just a means of communication, but a way of transformation, 
calling us to be still and listen to God's gentle guidance day in and day out. And so there's a tremendous contrast with the earthly noise. The still small voice is often drowned out by the noise of our world, our busy lives, our distractions. One thing I became acutely aware when I got to Sri Lanka after the long 20 plus hour flight, getting there, trying to adjust where you should be sleeping and now you're awake and then when you're awake you should be sleeping, all of that, that I noticed after a few days that I was not checking my phone. <clears throat> now we had an international service, but I wasn't, how many know what I'm saying? Like the feed, the news feed, what's going on? Let's see, let's check this app, what's happening? Oh, what happened here today? Or going through Facebook, come on, somebody, going through the feed, you know, it's the scroll, right? And then, oh, Instagram, you know, who's saying this, who's doing that, whatever. And I wasn't doing that. And what, after a few days, now watch this, I just became acutely aware of the anxiety and pressure we live in under here in America is enormous. I was out from underneath that. It is crazy that what that phone does to you, it possesses you if you let it. That's why you need to have timeouts with them, really. Just put the thing down. I'm speaking to myself. Like, just put the thing down. Can I get an amen? It stressed me out. And then coming to Sri Lanka, being there, I became aware of how much the phone had distracted me, and even at times from being so distracted, trying to get caught up with the news, trying to get caught, from listening to a young kid driving to that still small voice. How many hear what I'm saying? Just in that holy moment. And so I want to encourage you, you know, there is a tremendous, there is a tsunami of noise out there, but you have to come to a place where you learn and train your spirit to listen to that voice. And so if you have to shut that thing down or for a day don't have any social media, I don't know what it is, but you got to do something because it will possess your life. And they want it to. They got an avatar of you somewhere in the, in the matrix, you know? They know everything about you and they, they throw things at you, you know? It's like, oh, he's not scrolling. She's not scrolling. They throw, some of you looking at me think I'm crazy, but I'm right. Okay, they're throwing stuff at you. There's an avatar of you hanging in the, you know, the matrix somewhere. All right, that's a little bit too much. Moving right along. <clears throat> Watch this. So the still, small voice, it's not just a message, but it's a call to obedience for us all, urging us to follow God's will and plan in that holy moment. Can you say amen? And so, Elijah's encounter with God on Mount Horeb is a reminder that obedience is not just about doing what we think is right, but about listening to God's gentle guidance and following his lead. How many see that say man? Listening, not what we think is right in this moment, but listening. Say, Holy Spirit, are you speaking in this moment? What are you telling me to say? What are you telling me to do? What, what is it? What is it? Remember that statement right away at the first. As soon as I put it up there, no small act is insignificant for the kingdom of God. Amen? And so in this text with Elijah, the still small voice, I actually believe is referring to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. How many of you know Jesus didn't show up 2,000 years ago as a baby? He always was and always will be. He was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one. And the messenger of God, Yahweh, he visits Elijah two times, it says, in uh, verses five to seven. In, that, in, in 1 Kings, and it says this. It talks about the angel of the Lord. Can we say that? Say the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord in the Hebrew is the word Malik, which actually can mean messenger and can relate to someone as a messenger. However, in this reference here, Malik reference is to the Son of God sent by the Heavenly Father. You know, how many know Jesus showed up in the Old Testament? It's actually called, there's a, term in theology called theophany. And uh, theo, God, ophany means to appear. How many know Jesus always was and always will be? Okay? He showed up to Joshua. He showed up to Abraham. He showed up to Moses. And you can find it the way it's listed in the Hebrew that it's actually talking about Yahweh, God, the incarnate. All right? And, and so it's an appearance of God 
a visible display to human beings that expresses the presence and character of God. That's what a short version of a theophany. So Jesus shows up and he visits, I believe, Elijah strengthens his body. He feeds him. He counsels Elijah on the wilderness and on his way to Mount Horeb. And so here's the thing, the importance of us listening, listening. Listening to the still, small voice requires us to be still and quiet. Those are not curse words. Let me say that again. Still and quiet. There are times I am so agitated that I just am constantly going, and I've got to go focused and doing stuff and trying to accomplish this and running, and I'm not even being still. Now, there's a time when, you, you know, it says you need to make hay, you know what I mean, and the farmer went there. there you got to, you gotta, I'm not talking about walking around being passive. We're talking about listening to the still, small voice that is within every believer. Can I get an amen? And so that, that is a time we have to set aside our agendas in that moment to listen with an open heart and mind. And I'm just gonna say this, and, and some of you five-point Calvinists may not like it, that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not five-point Calvinist, but I'll just say this, I could have resisted that still small voice. I, I just, that's what I believe. So I'm gonna think, well, you know what? You, you, you know, God prompted you have to speak. Now I was stirred within, and I felt, you know what? I needed to open my mouth. But I could have just brushed it off, said, you know, he's just a kid, he's busy, I don't know, he doesn't understand me, there's a language barrier, and moved on. That's what I believe, you know. <clears throat> Here's the thing. When we listen uh, to the still, small voice, maybe you can help me pull that next slide forward. <clears throat> when we listen to the still, small voice, which is Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We are not just hearing words, but we're experiencing the presence and the power of God in our lives. Can you say amen? And so once again, that voice is a, is a powerful, transformative presence that actually, once again, calls us to obedience. And transformation will happen if we respond to it. And we will have a deeper connection to God. Some people are actually thrilled and surprised that God can actually speak through you to help someone else? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, once again, going back to, we have to learn to listen to this voice. Learn to be still, to be quiet, to follow God's gentle guidance in our life. And so, in our fast-paced, noisy world, it's easy to miss this subtle ways that God speaks. And so, this story of Elijah and 1 Kings is a powerful reminder that God often chooses to communicate, not through grandiose signs, but through the still, small voice. Stand with me if you would, please. Next week, Lord willing, we're just going to talk about some ways that God communicates to us through that still, small voice and us being obedient to it, obedient to it. But I just want to conclude here this morning and um, wanted to just have a moment if we just bow your head. Perhaps maybe you're here this morning and you say, well, Pastor, I, I mean, I believe in God, but I don't have the absolute assurance that, I mean, how can you know when you die, you're going to heaven? How can you really know? Well, the Word of God has been defended and we have someone that has come back from the dead. and His name is Jesus Christ, who declared he was God, that he was the way, the truth, and the life that there was no other way to heaven but except through Jesus Christ. And so to me, with millions of others, we have the answers to life. We have the words to life in the Word of God. With every head bowed here this morning, you say, you know, Pastor, I, I'm not, I don't have that assurance of salvation. God forbid if you were to die tonight, you'd go to heaven. God's desire is that you would, but you have the power to surrender your life. This may be different for some of you that may have heard this before, but you have the power to give your life over to Christ or to keep it. No decision is a decision. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, the Bible says then we are born again. And God's desire is for every person, I believe, to come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Will everyone choose? No, they have a free will. They ever free will. But God's desire and his, his spirit is calling out even in this holy moment. I believe that.
The Bible says in Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit. Jesus did not come only to teach. Jesus came to make me and to make you what he teaches I should be. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And you know, when you're poor in spirit, you come to a place in your life where you begin to say, Lord, I've tried everything. I've tried everything the world had to offer and nothing has brought me peace. Nothing has brought me console in my soul. Nothing has given me that assurance of salvation. You're here this morning and that's you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Sadly, you know what? It takes us so long to believe that we are actually poor in spirit because we keep trying in our own flesh. We keep striving. You know what? Let's just, let's try again. Let's try again. But when we come to the knowledge of our own poverty, that brings us to the proper place where Jesus accomplishes his work. That's why the Bible says you must be born again. With every head bowed, you hear this morning as a pastor, I feel that tug. I need to surrender my life to Christ. He is God. He is Lord. And I believe he died on that cross. And I'm going to give him my life today. As an act of my will, I'm going to surrender. I'm not saying you have all the answers, but you're seeking and you want to know. If that's you, I'd like us to pray together as a church. If you would pray with me, let's pray together. Say to me, say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Jesus, come into my life. Save me. Fill me with your presence. Jesus, I give you my life. Now take it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, the Holy Spirit of God has come into your spirit and he has saved you. And now you are, as the Bible talks, a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are born again. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. And we want to help you along the way, help you grow in your faith, help you with your family, help you with your kids, help you with your teenagers, help you with your marriage here in this church at Harvest. And so we have ways and means that we can help you and strengthen you in that. I want to invite the altar workers to come forward. They are uh, believers here, part of the altar ministry team, and they're here to pray over you, to minister to you, to agree with you in faith, whatever, maybe something you're going through. Maybe you just want them to just pray and bless you in your marriage. Or you you have something heavy on your heart that you'd like to share with them. And, and in confidentiality, they can, they can pray in the prayer of agreement over you. I just want to encourage you that they are safe people. They're here for you to minister life to you. Amen, church. Amen. Let me bless you here this morning. Father, we thank you for your holy presence. We thank you for the spirit of adoption here today, bringing such a time as this, those into the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray that we would all obey, be attentive to the still, small voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, that transformative voice. And Lord, that you would do mighty things as we step out in faith, even though they may seem small, and insignificant. They are powerful when we obey your voice. I bless the people of God today as we go forward.